cataractcoach.com. A junior resident case takes 30 minutes. Is this acceptable? Let's watch the video at high speed and learn. We have an anonymous junior resident who's operating. I want to commend you. That's a little bit of a tough case for a junior resident. Residents completed maybe a couple of dozen cases. Let's say 10, 20, 30 cases. Starting off with two pairs and TCs. That looks pretty good. Looks like the surgeon is sitting superiorly and perhaps putting some anesthetic or other midriatic agent inside the eye. That's a little bit better on the pupil. First, let me just start off by telling you, yes, it's perfectly fine. If you're a junior resident and you're learning and your case takes 30 minutes, that's okay. There is no rush. What's more important is you have good technique throughout the case. Don't ever be concerned with speed. Both when you're just starting off, like you are, this young resident, or even later on, I'm not concerned with speed of my cases at all. It takes the time that it takes. I'm concerned with how pretty is the case, how precise is the case, how safe is the case. These are far more important issues here. So that main incision looks pretty reasonable. Now, fixating the eye here with those forceps while starting a rexus with the cystitome and now going in with the forceps again, you got to upgrade and not keep grabbing the cons. Though. See that subconductive hemorrhage? I know it's only a cosmetic issue, but that's the, one of the next steps you got to fix there. Here's the rexus. I like the rexus. Good technique, holding the forceps appropriately. Good attempt there at floating inside the incision. And nice, good size five millimeter rexus, probably. We'll see at the end of the case when the lens goes in. But a good job at avoiding the baby rexus. That looks pretty good. I like it now. So now it looks like burping out some viscoelastic. Incision looks good. Look at the, the stromal uh, markings there, you can see. So now a little bit of uh, hydrodissection, probably. Let's see. So hydrodissection is being done. Again, we've sped the video up. The case is about. 30 minutes long. We've added it up so we can watch it in about like seven minutes. And so here we go. Looks Still looks good. Good rotation. I like it. So far, so good. So don't be concerned with your speed. You're doing things right. Looks great. My suggestion at this point are just quit, quit grabbing the conjunctiva so you don't cause that subconjunctival hemorrhage. But otherwise, you're doing a great job here. I liked your incisions. I liked your rexus. Here's the FACO Pro. Looks like a groove down the middle. That looks clean. Very nice. A groove architecture looks pretty good. Deeper in the center, less in the periphery. And now, see, rotating it a 180. You may want to use your second hand, your chopper, to help rotate the nucleus also, instead of doing it just with the FACO probe. And now, splitting it down the middle here, and almost. Yep, rotating it again. Yeah, try use both hands to rotate it. You may have an easier chance, uh, job. And now let's see what's going to happen here. And bringing the pieces up, okay. I like the type of uh, lens here too. Not too dense. You don't want it to be doing a dense cataract when you're just starting off and you're just a junior resident in training. And now bringing the whole thing up, that's okay also. Not sure why we pulled out of the eye. Oh, some viscoelastic. You know, viscoelastic cheaper than vitreous. I like the idea. Put some viscoelastic behind it to protect the capsular bag. Now bring this nuclear piece up and luck again luckily it's not too dense and it can be emulsified pretty easily that all looks great so good job here taking these pieces out i think you're doing a great job for a junior resident with you know 10 20 30 cases under your belt this is a fantastic result you're doing a beautiful job now one more thing that's of course driving you nuts as well as me nuts is at the top of your screen there all those eyelashes in the field. We don't want eyelashes in the field. These last three days before today, you saw three videos from me in a row. I get all the lashes out of the way. So you really want to make sure you get draping uh, down to an, a little bit more precise level so you don't have the lashes in the way. Now the struggle is there's a big epinuclear shell. The denser endonucleus has been removed. This epinuclear shell is going to be a little tougher. I like that technique. You may want to use your second hand. Having a second hand inside the eye will make life a lot easier. And then more viscoelastic underneath it. Hey, I like it. All right, viscoelastic cheaper than vitreous. You're doing a good job. There. There's the second hand. That's what we need. And get this out of the eye and nicely aspirated. Good job here. You are doing a great job. Keep up the good work. The important thing is your desire to learn. You want to learn. You want to get better. You sent the video in. You said, hey, keep it anonymous, but give me some great advice. And our, our fellow viewers here, please leave a comment below for this young doctor. 
and give your best advice for improvement here. So bimanual eye is pretty good. The eye is reasonably centered because it comes off our screen a little bit, and that's okay. That's kind of typical for a junior doctor who's still learning, but good job here. You may also want to try doing a circumferential approach to the cortex removal. Instead of stripping it radially, try circumferentially, and you can strip a big sheet at a time instead of just small little strips. That may make it a little bit easier here. And again, yeah, you'll for sure, your next video, you'll fix that draping issue. We don't want those lashes there in the field. So here's the viscoelastics, fill the caps or bag. Let's see what we're gonna do in terms of IOLs. And really proud of you. So it looks like the patient's in good positioning here. So patient probably got a retrobulbar block, which is probably helpful for a 30 minute case. Surgeon loaded up the lens solo, which I like. And now here comes the IOL. Let's see what we got here. And it looks like an injector that needs two hands. So delivering that lens, there it is, nice and easy. Get that in there and use your second instrument. Get it in the capsule bag. Very nice. And now you can see at the end, that six millimeter optic, probably a little bit of a hyperopic eye and removing viscoelastic very cleanly, very easily with a bimanual approach here. And that rexus looks great, about a five millimeter rexus. I'm really impressed. You're doing a fantastic job. Keep up the good work. Do not worry. Yes, I know it took you 30 minutes to do this case. It's perfectly fine. Just quit grabbing the conjunctiva. Oh boy, don't do that much hydration of the incision. This is way too much hydration of the incision. Why, why, why? No, no, no. We don't need all that. Have a great construction and architecture of the incisions, and they don't need such massive degrees of hydration. That's just going to cause some corneal irregularities, astigmatism, warpage. Gosh, that's not going to be pretty on day one. It'll be fine after a week or two or three, but you need to do less hydration there. And of course, do we say it already? Fix the draping. Hey, really appreciate you sending your video and keep up the good work. You are going to be a fantastic surgeon. We have faith in you. And remember, please, my other viewers, leave some comments below and for suggestions for improvement for this young doctor in training. Thanks for watching.